Would I Lie to You? Always a fun show, it's Frankie Boyle. Hot from the one show, it's Christine Blakely. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing them tonight, he edited The Sun, it's Kelvin McKenzie. He lives with his mum, comedian Jack Whitehall. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And here's your host, Rob Brydon. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where liars always prosper. A recent survey revealed that one of the most common lies is how nice to see you, as in the sentence, how nice to see you, Lee. <laughs> Another really common lie is sorry to bother you, as in sorry to bother you, Rob. No, come in, Lee. How nice to see you. <laughs> and last year, a British couple divorced after the husband lied about a relationship with a girl in cyberspace. I met a girl in cyberspace, uh, Glitter Babe 22, and we started chatting eventually ended up having cyber sex. Turns out we had a lot in common in real life. I was the host of Would I Lie to You? And she was a team captain on Would I Lie to You? <laughs> <laughs> and so do round one. Home Truths, where our panellists <clears throat> each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sift the fact from the fiction and Christine oh. is first. Christine, please reveal all. Okay. Anton Dubeck and I danced our way out of a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we are. Uh, David's team, what do you think? So, the, so the, a traffic warden were about, was about to give you a parking ticket and you did a dance for him but, or her and he said, all right, I'll let you off. Uh, is that it? That's the gist of the uh, story, uh, yes. Where about them this with the... <laughs> It was outside Harvey Nichols. But, but you can't park outside Harvey Nichols. Exactly. That's how she was looking. We. <laughs> 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 we... <laughs> so I exactly love you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 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 Outside Harvey. So whose car was it? It Your... was in his car. Well, he had to drive. He'd someone. Had... Oh right. So his chauffeur. Did he join him with the dance? The no. Chauffeur? No. No. He didn't. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of dance was it? It was a little bit of a foxtrot. He's a ballroom guy, you see. And Waltz was my best dance on Strictly, so it was a bit of ballroom. Does Anton de Beck try to dance his way out of every traffic violation? I would say probably. <laughs> was, it, was, it, um, was it an Italian traffic warden who watched what you were doing and went, you are fast, you're furious, you're back, you're forward, you're up, you're... <laughs> I'm doing Bruno Tognoli <laughs> from Strictly Come Dance. Can I say, yeah. I think that you look a bit like the gentleman in question, don't you? The traffic warden? No. <laughs> No, you look like Anton Debeck. I so have been, has been Why don't you on. demonstrate with Would Rob you how the dance me, went? Anton? Yeah, go on. Go on. Okay. It's like right. this. <laughs> it certainly okay. is now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get quite close to you. Go as close as you We've like. I've got to touch bodies, okay? Oh, something's touching. <laughs> Can I just say, that's, <laughs> that's, that's my phone. <laughs> A little bit of this, I to stick my head up. <laughs> You go the other way. That's no, it. I do not. <laughs> there was a little bit of this, a little bit of waltzing, yeah. but it involves moving your feet. I mean, a little bit like that, but not quite. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> so there we are. Now, what, what do you reckon, then, uh, David? What do you think, Kelvin? Uh, I I don't believe a word of it. I don't believe that there is a generous spirited traffic warden anywhere <laughs> in the world. Jack, what do you think? I think she's telling the truth because I know when she's being dishonest because I watch the one show every day. <laughs> and I see your face laughing at Adrian Charles's jokes. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I think she's telling the truth. You think she's telling the truth? Yep. And you think she's lying? I do. My instinct is I think it's a lie. You think it's a lie? Yeah. Okay, Christine. Uh, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is, in fact, a lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. Uh, Christine and Anton Dubac did not dance their way out of a parking ticket. I mean, no one who saw Christine dance would believe that. Uh, <laughs> if anything, they'd probably increase the fine. <laughs> Jack, you're next. 
every Christmas, my dad makes the whole family stand up to watch the Queen's speech. Lee's team, what do you think? How many is in your family? Uh, there's uh, two uh, brothers and sisters, and then two parents. You look like you're lying about that. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> so he makes the what? five of you all stand for the Queen's speech? We all stand. Not we'll... just the national anthem at the beginning, the actual... The whole speech. speech. So when it goes on, we're all, you know, come on, hurry up, old woman. The, uh, <laughs> old woman. He doesn't like it's referring to her as that, either. Right. We stand is that, up is that the only thing on Christmas Day that's got some sort of physical challenge element <laughs> to it? Or do you have to hop throughout Indiana yeah. Jones? Or... <laughs> <laughs> They're just the standing for the for the Queen's speech. But why why would that be? I mean, I know why he's quite old fashioned. He's living in a kind of like time warp. He's quite an, he's quite an old dad, um, and he's one of those people like he'll buy a spam and sit in the cellar because he misses the Blitz. He's like <laughs> he, he's in, still thinks he's living in a bygone era. How old is he, Jack? Uh, he's sixty nine today, actually. And how old are you? Uh, twenty. So, ba so basically, if you're if you're twenty and your dad's sixty nine, at the point that he conceived you, he must have thought there is a significant risk that this will kill me. <laughs> Jack, are you allowed to speak during the, the speech at all, or is it very much this is fifty minutes of silence? Did you say fifty? Did you say fifty minutes of silence? Is that the director's 15. cut? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's ten at most, and they pad it out with music and hand shaking. Yeah. In terms of acting fact she's conveying it's still five and a half minutes if you ask me yeah. Yeah. and she talks slowly <laughs> she's bad at it it's a shit program <laughs> did you did you see that when the queen met obama and then everyone was it was amazing you saw her face just thinking please don't talk to my husband <laughs> well, obama said about the queen that he thought that she was surprisingly knowledgeable about politics and she was clearly thinking nelson mandela's looking well <laughs> So, Lee, what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking? What do you think, Frankie? Well, it sort of depends on how posh we think he is. I think Jack is quite posh. He's quite posh, isn't he? He sounds like a Korean man begging for help after a traffic accident. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that, <laughs> that almost incomprehensible poshness about him. <laughs> Sorry, is that what comes out of poshness to you <laughs> more than anything else? An yeah. injured Korean? <laughs> to you incredibly <laughs> posh. <laughs> to be honest, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> do you, Jack, do you get to a point where you're so posh that you do without hairbrushes? I, <laughs> <laughs> I found my depth sometimes in... Because uh, uh, those protest things where they go on the marches and stuff, I did, uh, the only one I've ever been on was fox hunting. And there were people going around saying, you know, oh, this is a real cause, and, you know, there are more names on the pro-fox hunting petition than there are on the anti one. Yeah, because most people that sign it have triple-barrelled surnames. <laughs> Foxes are the great way to tell class, aren't they? Because if, if you see a fox in your back garden, if you're upper class, you get on a horse and chase it. If you're a middle-class person, you get your children to do a picture of it. <laughs> Maybe send it to Blue Peter. <laughs> if, you're, if you're working class, you beat it to death with a shovel and use it to make soup. <laughs> So, Lee, it's time to come down on one side or the other. So, what do we think? Is he telling the truth? I think, yeah, he's probably telling the truth. Do you think? Yeah. Mm, I think he's posh enough to be telling the truth. Yes, we think he's telling the truth. You, they're saying it's the truth. Jack, are you telling the truth or are you telling them a big lie? It is, I'm going to stand, true. <laughs> Every Christmas, Jack's dad does make the whole family stand up to watch the Queen's speech. My father made us stand one Christmas. He'd pawned our sofa to pay his gambling debts. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Dad. A child doesn't forget these things. <laughs> Frankie, you're next. When I was a child, I was scared that my entire life was a book being read by a bear. And one day... <laughs> The bear would close the book and my life would end. <laughs> um, the first question is, what, what on earth made you stop thinking that? I, I grew older and more rational. I thought... You That's know, a matter of what, opinion. Uh, what, age? <laughs> <laughs> what, what age were you when this rather peculiar thought came to you? Quite early, but then, you know, up until I was maybe seven or eight, I was quite afraid of that. So is it where your interior monologue was in the voice of, of a gruff bear? 
I thought I thought that there was a chance <laughs> yeah. that my life was was a simply a fiction. Did, We've all felt that, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Not, in, not in a bear society. <laughs> <laughs> What does the bear look like? Was he like a little cartoony bear, or did he look very natural, like a natural bear? He was reading a book, so he didn't look that natural. <laughs> <laughs> it came from a storybook I had, which was called Tell Me Another Story, and it was about a bear reading stories to his little bears. Did you have any, like, relationship with him? Did you converse with him, or was he just reading? You can't converse with him. The, 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 the bear, he's in the bear's but world. You say, <laughs> wait, he's <laughs> junior to the bear. You can't... You can't I jump out of the book that is your life and talk to the person reading it, yeah. can you? You can't say, why is this happening, Bear? No! <laughs> Otherwise, the Bear's just gonna go, and then, why is this happening, Bear, said Frankie Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this bit of the story. Yeah, I'll stop reading it, shall I? No, 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 screamed Frankie Boy. Don't stop reading the story, it is the end of my life. But this is definitely not suitable for little bears. <laughs> David, time to uh, make a decision. I, well, oh, what do you think, Kelvin? I, I think it's a massive whopper. <laughs> I really want it to be true, so I'm going to say true. I think because I think yeah. it could be. I think it's. I think it's true. It's creative mind. I do think it's true because I. It's a very odd thing for them to have made up. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go for true? Uh, it's, yeah, I think we're going to go you're for saying true. true. Oh, okay. You're wrong. So you're wrong. Right. You say that it's true, uh, Frankie. Uh, were you telling the truth? Is a lie. Uh, <laughs> it's a lie. When Frankie was a child, he wasn't scared that his entire life was a book being read by a bear. Uh, a Chinese philosopher once asked me, Am I a man dreaming he's a butterfly, or a butterfly dreaming he's a man? And I replied, Do I get free crackers if my order comes to more than ten pounds? <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some amazing celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide whether they're true or not. Uh, David's team, take a look at this. At a terraced house in Ramsgate, a family settled down to watch the television, but the pictures on screen are from a rather special but unusual event. The people here are watching their granny's ashes being blasted into the sky. Her family say she was slightly eccentric with a great sense of humour. It was her stated wish that her ashes be placed in a rocket and blasted heavenwards. This was the event itself. Here we go, here we go. Oh, my granny! <laughs> yes, uh, granny's gone to a better place. Next door's garden. <laughs> Well, here is the related fact, then, for David's team. Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. <laughs> they offered Mick Jagger, and it seems too good an opportunity to waste, Mick Jagger, they offered... Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. It's not up there with my Ronnie Corbett. I'm not going to say for a second that it is, but it was worth an airing. But what would Ronnie Corbett sound like if he was singing a Mick Jagger song? Yeah. <laughs> good on, good on. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> and, and <Australia laughs> it was an Australian. <laughs> Don't try and look like you weren't pleased to be asked. <laughs> All right, on we go. Um, an Australian novelty firm called Trend Connection, they were the ones, they offered Mick Jagger £20 million for his ashes. And the plan was for a share of the profits to go back to Mick Jagger's estate. On top of the £20 million. Pounds. Oh, oh, does he get the £20 million? Pounds he gets it now. Now, before yeah. dying, and yes. then they just sort of hang around with some paraffin and... and yeah. the, <laughs> uh, uh, well, these things were going to be... They, they asked Jagger's permission to market small portions of his ashes in collectible hourglasses, costing a million dollars each. Oh. I mean, I know his dignity has not always been that man's priority, but even for him, it is quite undignified to have your remains spread around the houses of a lot of vulgar millionaires and using it to time their breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what are you going to say, then? Uh, what do you think, Kelvin? Uh, I think it's so ridiculous, it must be true. Kelvin's been better at the guessing than me, so I think we should go with Kelvin. Um, so, we're going to go with true. You're saying it's true. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let me tell you this. It is true. <laughs> Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. 
Actually, Mick doesn't want to be cremated, he wants to decompose naturally, a process Keith Richards started 30 years ago. <laughs> Which means at the end of that round, it's Lee in the lead with three points to two. is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, Terry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kelvin, what is Terry to you? Uh, well, this is Terry, and he built the nuclear bunker in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, David? Uh, this is Terry, and he's the policeman who was called out when I was caught trying to break in through the window of my own flat. <laughs> All right. And Jack? Uh, this is Terry, uh, the mean machine Fraser, and he is teaching me to wrestle. <laughs> right. <laughs> So there we have it. Please, team, where on earth do you begin? Yeah. Calvin, how many people can fit in this bunker? I bet it's just one, you selfish get. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> <laughs> Four at a push. So why do you feel... <laughs> <laughs> so why do you want one in the first place? It, it's a dangerous world out there, and I, I, want to, I want to be protected, and I want to protect those closest to me. If there's a nuclear war... I don't want to live. Neither do I. I'm with you. I, I don't want to come out of a shelter and try and rebuild society. And find Kelvin Mackenzie skipping yeah, around I, saying I'm in charge. I have no skills. But, I mean, how long? OK, society is destroyed by a nuclear war. Yeah. How long? In this, basically, we're back to the Bronze Age. How long is it going to be before people start pitching panel shows again? <laughs> it's going to be at least 2,000 years. <laughs> I'd love to see you in a Mad Max type of society <laughs> as, everyone's, as everyone's holding off a biker gang and you're going, I can think of an amusing reason why one of yeah. these four might be the odd one out. Yeah. <laughs> so, Calvin, there's four people can fit in this bunker. Yep. So you only have three people in the world that you care about. That is true. So there's us <laughs> two, and who else? <laughs> Ronnie Corbett. Um... <laughs> We can live for another 20 years at the world's shittest party. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jack, and why are you learning how to wrestle? Cos I'm a big wrestling fan. I've always liked wrestling. I went what, what kind see, of wrestling? Uh, like, WWE. Uh, I went WWE? To see WWE, yeah, World Wrestling Entertainment. Oh, I thought it was I WWF. See, oh, it's they changed to change now. it cos the World Wildlife Fund sued them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not a joke, that's why they had to change yeah. it. Is that true? Yeah. 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 Do you really like it? Yeah, I do. I saw a man who was like seven foot four in little spandex undies when I felt alive. <laughs> Amazing. How Can long you... have you been learning for? Uh, I've done one lesson, but I'm going to do some more. I've done one, one lesson. lesson. It was really good. What are you learning for, though? Just because you want to be able to wrestle? Yeah, I want to be able to right. wrestle. I want to many strings studies to this book. as a martial arts. You see all the posters, right? Taekwondo, karate, judo, whatever. I'm going to go and learn how to wrestle like a big pretend American. <laughs> Jack, can you tell us the name of five famous wrestlers? Uh, the Rock, Hulk Hogan, The Hulk Undertaker. Hogan. <laughs> Go on. Uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, that's this... not... That's a bloody yeah. solicitor's. No. <laughs> Shelton, Shelton Benjamin? Shelton Benjamin is a wrestler. Is it? Don't, yes. Please don't tell me that you've accidentally been represented in law. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> All right, David, uh, remind us again. Uh, this is Terry, the policeman, who was called out when I was caught trying to break into the window of my own flat. Do we, do we believe that, Christine? I can believe you were trying to break into your own flat for whatever bizarre reason, but I'm well, not to, so sure to about... To live there, to continue to live there. <laughs> I locked myself out when I, I had a plumber round trying to unblock a uh, drain. I find it difficult to imagine you holding a conversation with a plumber yeah. as he did the job. Did you actually speak to him in your house? Yes. Did you have a glove puppet on? <laughs> ah, little David is very pleased with your work. <laughs> so, so would you like a cup of tea, so little David? Your, your genuine view of me is I would be unable to converse. <laughs> yes. I would have to yeah, create another character. Yeah. So, <laughs> please excuse my mute friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's, you can't say a thing, can you? <laughs> Anyway, I'm in charge. That sink no longer functions. <laughs> Silence, you! 
No, you've not <laughs> covered how the police got involved in, in this whole... Uh... A policeman, a Terry, turned up and I think had been called by a neighbour. All right, so, look, we, we, we need an answer. So, uh, so, Lee's team. Is Terry Kelvin's bunker builder, David's investigating officer or Jack's wrestling teacher? The only thing that's true about any of this is that I do believe that Jack might be into wrestling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I reckon it's got to be Kelvin. He seems like the sort of paranoid nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> he might have too much time on his hands. At the minute, I'm going to go with Kelvin. I think Kelvin. he might be telling the truth. Yeah, really? Well, I'll go with my team then and say that... Yeah. You're saying it's Kelvin? Yeah. OK, Kelvin's right. Now, nice. Terry, would you like to reveal the true identity? I'm Terry Fraser, I'm the meme machine, and I talk Jack <laughs> at the for a second. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Terry, the meme machine, Fraser, is teaching Jack to wrestle. Now, show us together what come you on, come can up. do. This... I'm ready for this, bro. You ready for this? I'm ready. This show gets more and more like the Generation game. <laughs> So, yeah, this is the basic slam. OK, wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait. whoa! Hello! <laughs> That's fine, Terry. Thank you, you're no longer the scariest person on the show. Are you OK? I... Yeah, I think sure? so. Seriously. I've done one lesson, I'm not very good. <laughs> You didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> well, can, I just, can I just ask, during the lesson, did you get the impression that you were annoying, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team are three points and Lee's team had three. <laughs> which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. Now, the scores are tied, so there's everything to play for. We start with... <laughs> it's Lee. If you give me any date before the year 2000, I can instantly tell you what day of the week it was. Bollocks. <laughs> is this something you learn, or is this the kind of, you know, Rain Man type thing? No, no, I had to... That's, well, I had to learn... You learned how to do it? Learned the system. What's, what's, what's the, the system? system? The system is, uh, what you do is you actually just learn... <laughs> learn... <laughs> Trying to think of a system. And what you're planning for is you, you actually just learn what day of the week every, every day. day is. I can't go back to like 14 BC. Right? Right. But I can I can do it right the way back to the sort of 1920s, 1930s. And what you do is you learn a midway, so you learn the 19, you learn one particular pit point in 1955, three months in 1955, you learn it off by heart those 90 days. And then there's a calculation that you can do to plus or minus. What's that calculation? Take a day, one of your, you know, your expert period, the, right. around Suez or whenever it yes. was. Well, you have to give me the exact year, otherwise it'll be too different. Well, okay, answers. I, I don't mind. Right, the 14th of May, 1955. Well, hang on, 14th of May. Tuesday. 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 Right. Tuesday. And so, how do you extrapolate from your knowledge of that to go yeah. back to the 1920s to the 23rd of June, 1927? It's dead simple. Yep. It's seven. Hang on. To the power of two. <laughs> right. Then you take away 10% unless right. it's a leap year. And is it a leap year, 1955? Uh, of course not, you idiot. That was 54. And what about... Uh, so ni <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Okay. This one here, that is 55 a leap year. <laughs> Seven to the power of two. <laughs> seven to the power of two is 49. Is minus minus 10%, ten percent. Ten percent. Four point nine. So you got seven, forty-four point one. Correct. I was going to say that's, that's, that's not a day of the week. That's I haven't done it yet. It, it is, is. forty-four point one. Then you, you round it up or round it down, which is forty-four. Forty-four. Key of the door. Twenty-one. Two and one is three. Sunday's the first day. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> Oh, David, it's you, true. you think it's true? I think it's true. I, I, it's I, I think I think, think it's lie. I think it's clever. I think it's true. There's an easy way to find out. We all know what day of the week we were born on. Well, most of us do. And if you tell me what day your date of birth is, I'll tell you the day of the week you were born. Okay, four, 14th of July, 1974. Is that your birthday? Yeah. You were born on a Thursday. <laughs> I do. Looking at the demographic. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll give the demographic of this audience. This will be a shock. 22, 10, 46. BC. 46. <laughs> Do you know the day of the week you were born? No. Good. Well, that's Andy. Thursday. <laughs> lie. You just did. <laughs> you're saying it's a lie. OK, Lee, are you telling a lie? Of course I'm telling a lie. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Next. <laughs> Christine. Oh. <laughs> OK. Coronation Street star once made me remove all the red M&Ms from a bowl for him. Which Coronation Street star? My mum watches this, so I'm good. Adam Rickett. Adam Rickett. <laughs> I should tell you that, that Adam Rickett played Gail Tilsley's son. There we are. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that's really he familiar went... for me. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he? He uh, went yeah. to Canada or he went off, didn't he? I don't the watch character? it, my darling. Oh, okay. They just told me. So... <laughs> I've never worked with such a bunch of snobs in my life. I know. <laughs> in what context did you meet him? I met him um, when he was a guest on a show in BBC Northern Ireland. So, uh, what were you doing on the show? I was working um, behind the scenes, which is what I used to do. What, what as? A floor manager. You did make the move from being a studio manager to in front of the screen, didn't you? Yep, yes. She hasn't made the motor being in front of the screen. That would just be annoying, wouldn't it? She's, <laughs> she's in front of the screen going, Christine, love, would you get out of the way, please? Uh, what do you think? Lie. And you? Go on, no, what do you think? I think it's a lie. Oh, well, there we are. My views don't count, they do well, they? No, uh, <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> You're saying lie. OK, Christine, uh, true or lie? It is actually true. <laughs> <laughs> So how did, um, did this request uh, come through to you? What, what did he say? Well, you see, we get rider lists, as, as it's called, and for our sort of big names. What's on your rider list? This is when I'm on tour. Flapjacks, raspberries, a Diet Coke, two still mineral waters, grapes and blueberries. Rock and roll, Rob. Rock and roll. <laughs> you don't look like this without a bit of effort. <laughs> Very particular list of things. Yes. Well, that's why it's a list, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your rider? Right? Six cans of better and a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, six cans of better for a teetotal alcoholic. Are <laughs> <laughs> you, you Frankie yeah. Boyle? Could complain about the fact that I said bitter and not mention the knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the knife, but don't accuse me of drinking. <laughs> And that noise means only one thing. It is the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team have five, and in what we call a tie, Lee's Ooh. team have five. <laughs> but, of course, <clears throat> it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Kelvin McKenzie. It's Kelvin's biggest award since Elton John's £1 million damages against him in 1987. Good night. <laughs>
evening and welcome to Would I Lie To You, the show that rewards the very best liars. Uh, research shows that 51% of Scottish women lie to get out of lovemaking. Oh, I'm allergic to bins. <laughs> Lovely image, isn't it? <laughs> and psychologists claim that laughing at a joke you don't find funny is a form of lying. I disagree. I think it's good manners. <laughs> and I'll thank you all to remember that. <laughs> and so, to round one, Home Truths, where our panellists take it in turns to read out a statement about themselves from the card in front of them. They haven't seen what's on the card yet. It could be a truth, it could be a lie, but it's definitely a card. <laughs> Janet is first up. Janet, reveal all. <clears throat> right. <laughs> I wrote my will on a bit of cardboard when I thought the plane I was in was about to crash. Oh, there we are. Right. No, but certainly, yeah, she was, I'd say, trying to make it look like she was amazed by the ridiculous yeah. thing on the card. Yeah, like yeah. But maybe she was amazed by the ridiculous thing on the card, because <laughs> I imagine <laughs> if a plane crashed, one of the things that would perish along with the humans <laughs> would, be, would be the cardboard. <laughs> so, um... Are you asking me to comment well, on I'm, that? I, 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 I think but... he's just suggesting that you should have written your will on the black box. Yeah. <laughs> Logistically impossible, aren't they locked you in their cabins now? Doing that. Oh. Sorry to argue with you. No, you, no I, you see, I'm, I don't think that the black box solution was workable either. Okay. <laughs> I, I think when they talk about when they find the black box, what they do is it's a recording they play rather than so they read what's written on it. <laughs> don't you mean I could have got in the pilot's cabin and just screamed my will at them? You could have actually come <laughs> on the radio and say, never mind, Mayday, Mayday, yeah. take this down. <laughs> Was it cardboard and not paper? <laughs> it was a packet. A packet of what? <laughs> Do you um, always look this cheesed off when you're thinking? It's, I've got so many cogs whirring in my brain. Mm. I'm just trying to control so them. So many what? Sorry? Cogs. Oh. <laughs> Who makes double figures? <laughs> um, I think it's triple figures you're aiming at. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was a film packet. Why film did you part. think it? Why did you think it would work? I was panicking. Yeah. The bloody plane was crashing. You're not <laughs> magical, are you? What were you writing? I mean, were you writing like bits and bobs to each person, or was it like everything? I was leaving everything to the person I was with. Oh, he was in the plane. <laughs> Has to come through me. Right? <laughs> so presumably it didn't crash because thankfully you're, you're with us and you know. No, we thought it was going to crash. Yeah. And the plane had problems with the landing gear. Well, David, you've heard yeah. you've okay. heard a fair old testimony. Well, here. I don't think um, Janet doesn't strike me as a. She moron. will do by the end of the night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think to write a will on something that will burn more quickly than you will. <laughs> is a moronic act. But the only thing that worries me was the beginning when she looked at it. it I felt, felt that bluff. she was acting. Yeah. And you're thinking all along, she knows exactly what she's reading because it's the truth. I think it was a bit double bluff at the beginning. You, you, I you think, think it's probably true. true. Yeah. And you're leaving I to think us it true. it could be true. Yes. Oh, well, I mean, I just don't think it is true, but I'm, I'm happy to be outvoted. We think it's true. <laughs> you say it's true. <laughs> Janet, is it fact or fiction? True. Oh. Oh. Yes, I was Yes, it's all true. Janet wrote her will on a bit of cardboard when she thought the plane she was on was about to crash. Passengers heard a terrifying whining noise, an unearthly screeching. It was Janet asking for an extra blanket. <laughs> uh, Davina is next up. Davina, reveal all. Yes. <clears throat> I have two chilies tattooed on my back, but I'm having them covered up because they look like carrots. Lee's team, what do you think of that faltering delivery? Well, wh whereabouts are they on your back? Um, they're on this side. I know where the back is. Sort of <laughs> down on my shoulder. When did you have them done? Uh, 15 
20 years ago. Why, why did you choose the two red chilies? Um, I was in Bali and uh, we were uh, on an island um, called Lombok. We? I don't remember this. And <laughs> Lombok... <laughs> you just my drinking face. I know you've got tattoos. What are the other tattoos? Um, horns. Where's that? Uh, on my hips. <laughs> One on each side? Yeah. <laughs> what, so your belly button looks like a ram's nose? Not my belly button. Hey. What? <laughs> she said, not my belly button. <laughs> Nice. What can I say? Hey, a bit of sauce yeah. from McCall. I like it. Did you choose chilies so that if a bloke came across him, he'd think she's hot stuff? Yeah, but I would think that if people didn't think they were carrots. Either that or here's something I don't want in my mouth for too long. <laughs> so you were in Bali. Who were you in Bali with? My boyfriend at the time. Changed now. Yeah. Right, 15 okay. years ago. 15 didn't work years out. ago. Well, that's and fair enough. So you went, you're right with that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> 15 yeah. years ago. I'm Relationships fine. change, you know? No, no, I'm starting to dislike you. <laughs> what do you reckon? What do you think, Janet? Like. Fib. Fib. Big fib. Omid? Lie, definitely. Omid says it like he's passing sentence. <laughs> uh, I actually think it's true, but my team think it's not true. And who am I to overrule her? <laughs> So, Lee, I really do need a... OK, I'll go with my team and I'll say that that is, in fact, a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Davina McCall, is it true or is it a lie? Oh! True! so sorry. I was just about to support you. Let's have a look, then. I need some I'll, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get out! Carrots, well... <laughs> Very, very clarity. I got done. Yeah. Give me a moment now just to let the blood come back to my head. Um, <laughs> yes, it's true. Davina is having her tattoos of chilies covered up because they look like carrots. Davina was inspired to have the chilies done after a wild holiday in Lombok, Indonesia. Similarly, David has a very striking tattoo on the small of his back of the wonderful Tiverton Steam Museum. <laughs> Omid, your turn to confess all. It says, read with accent. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a bomb strapped under my shirt? <laughs> That's in very poor taste. That's in very poor taste. Um... No, no, that, that's, that's obviously a lie. <laughs> I am launching my own range of condiments, including Omi Jalili Piccalilli. <laughs> so, if take... you're not, you've got to. <laughs> <laughs> who, who approached you about launching a range of condiments? Uh, Penguin Books. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They, they, that's where their money comes from. <laughs> Barry Norman has a range of pickled onions out. Through Penguin Books? I don't know about Penguin Books, well, yes, but Barry rich. Norman does have jars of pickled onions. Well, like Paul Newman yeah, with his salad. No, he does. Salad, yeah. Well, it was. That, that was the idea. They were trying to make this Paul Newman thing happen. I said, I've only done a few bit parts and a few films. And they said, well, you're quite well known in comedy and we're trying to get this new thing, Jalili Piccalili. There'll be other, other uh, products as well. Jalili Chili, all kinds of things with Lily at the end. So why, yeah. why did Penguin Books... I mean, just... <laughs> is it... Is it to go with a book? They wanted me to write a book, but I didn't feel I was old enough or experienced enough to write anything about my life. So, so... you said, how about I do some sort of sauces and spices and... <laughs> instead? I didn't. They did. They, there was somebody who was in the meeting who has a sideline in condiments. So Penry Book said, we'd love you to do a book. And you said, no, no. <laughs> I won't do a book. OK, oh, dear, he won't do a book. That was a good idea. Any chance of some condiments? <laughs> In the office next door, there's a guy and basically what he's just been working on some pickled onions with Barry Norman. <laughs> he was brilliantly your name rhymes with some condiments. <laughs> yes. Particularly Piccadilly, which we're, we're trying to introduce to a new generation. Reintroduce. That's not his real yeah. name. His real surname is Jabasco Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
I'm, I'm not really prepared confused. to say anymore. Absolute. I think it's gone so weird that I it's think, true. I, I think. Th well, stranger things have happened, but I think only but about six ever. <laughs> <laughs> The, 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 the books the, thing is can't the be true. It's such a strange thing to make up if it's a lie that it makes me think it's true. I, you see, I think what I'm worried that we're in danger of doing here is say, <laughs> having heard something that is absurd and obviously not true, and saying that therefore it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, what's it going to be? I think we think it's going. It's a lie, but I'd like to say if it is true, it's what a wonderful world. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. It's a okay, Ahmed yes. Jalili, is it fact or is it fiction? It's absolute crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Ahmed is not launching his own range of condiments, including Ahmed Jalili Pick a Lily. That's quite clearly a lie. Actually, Ahmed did once release his gentleman's relish in a supermarket. <laughs> To this day, he's banned from Asda. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth, where I will be reading out some strange celebrity facts, but will I be lying through my teeth or telling the truth through my teeth? Uh, Lee's team, take a look at this. It seems to me that it's highly likely that pigeons, like any other sort of bird, are going to have regional accents. We've got a, a pigeon here in Scotland that was born ten years ago and has lived in Scotland ever since. So we're going to get quite a nice pronounced Scots accent with a bit of luck. <laughs> if you keep going south and drop down maybe, maybe even as far south as Putney, you're going to get a nice Cockney accent developing from your pigeons. <laughs> and there's a nice little wind flap. There we are. I love the fact that, you know, how much they patronise me on this show. We're 4 0 down, and yes. I'm thinking, give Lee a chance, ask him a question about pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> we'll understand that. He's from oh, it's the more north. than that. That's your dad filmed two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's dead. <laughs> Was he dead two weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, actually, no. Right, fair. <laughs> Yeah. Good point, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so, here is the related fact for Lee's team. Uh, Mike Tyson once rented a hotel suite for his eight favourite pigeons. Do you believe that, Lee's team? It's been well documented that Mike Tyson breeds pigeons. So they have their own suite? Sure. Yes. Why is the pigeon, like, called down for room service? The woman on reception must be going, it's just a dialing tone. <laughs> 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 this is a world in which the pigeon has lifted the receiver and pressed the button for room service. He invited several journalists up to his hotel suite where the eight pigeons were perched on the wardrobe in the bedroom, and he said to one of the journalists, be careful where you fit. I've, well, that's... That's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's who that... That's that British one. That's um, Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank, yes. It's a shame if you don't have Chris, because I can do a very good Chris. Um, <gasps> that's really careful. good. I know, it's such a shame it's about bloody Tyson, isn't it? Bummer. Do the same, do the same thing to the American. Do Teddy Wogan. Oh, be careful where you sit. Uh, <laughs> Franz Ferdinand. Um... <laughs> Um, Davina, you, I, I've heard uh, you do a very good pigeon impression. And if that's true, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> it's going to shit on the bonnet of a car, isn't it? Very <laughs> <laughs> impressed with how you're centering yourself. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke over it. <laughs> again, again, do it again. Great. Oh, lovely. Well done. There you are. <laughs> so, Lee, what you, that's something you guess, then. Is, is it true or is it a lie? I, you think that he would actually book a hotel for his pigeons? He loves them that much, he'd book a hotel room for them. You're no, paving the way for me to be in the doghouse again, aren't you? Is that a child blind? No. <laughs> We've got naught points. <laughs> No, I'm just working out. Right. You're already regretting you. having me on your team. I didn't and if have I get a choice. This wrong... 
<laughs> I've been in a room with him and he's got such a scary atmosphere around him. I can imagine something like that would be true. You think it's true? Yeah, I, I, think, I it's think it's true. true. Well, okay. I don't think it's true, but you're I'm saying go true. with my team again. The team so far, the rec track record has been brilliant. <laughs> the team are saying true. It's true. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Mike Tyson did once rent a hotel suite for his eight favourite pigeons. Which means, at the end of that round, it's uh, David in the lead by four points to one. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Uh, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it'll be up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Sadie. <laughs> So, Lee, what is Sadie to you? This is Sadie. She's my children's nanny, and the first time I met her, I ran over her foot. <laughs> OK. Omid? Um, this is Sadie, and I employ her to massage my dog. <laughs> and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, Janet. Sadie came to my 60th birthday party, pretended to be a waitress so she could lick Daniel Craig's plate. <laughs> so, there we have it. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? Can I just check? Do you know Lee? Uh, have you been to his I've, house? I, I, I can just about remember his name. <laughs> what, do you know his nanny? No. Okay. Can I, I because can... if I knew Lee's nanny, I'd either have gone, that's Lee's nanny, <laughs> She's my children's offer. nanny. I'm not a complete moron. <laughs> She's not my nanny. Uh, now, this, this running over the foot business. Yeah. Uh, that was the first time you met her. Correct. Uh, and the circumstances were? Uh, I was in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and she was on the driveway. Correct. W what happened immediately after the foot running over moment? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you roll that forward? Ow! That was my foot! <laughs> well, you see, she's laughing quite a lot now, as if, like, I have to laugh, he's my employer. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't, as it were, how you met her. You didn't run over her foot and say, you look like you might be a good nanny. <laughs> well, it was the first time she'd arrived at the house. I hadn't met... I'd never met her before, because so, so my wife... Your wife had interviewed her and... Yeah, and I said... can finish my own sentences. Yeah, yeah. I'm really good at it. <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd interviewed, actually, you're correct, yes. <laughs> Tell me, why do you have to get your dog massaged? Uh, that... First of all, I, it's, it's my kid's dog. We've had the dog for about seven years. Uh, th they wanted to get a masseuse because of uh, arthritis. It's a spaniel. We've had it for seven years, so in dog years it's about 42, so it's quite early, and I didn't want to pay for a masseuse, but it Couldn't somebody killed the else dog. learn to massage? Instead. It's a very it's, it's a highly skilled thing. It is. Uh, it's about thirty-five pounds a session. And how long are you going to have to do it until the dog dies? Uh, I don't. We don't know. It may, it may be indefinite. You know, you can have a dog put down for thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, can I just check? Sadie came round to your house. She pretended that she was a waitress. She wanted to lick Daniel C Craig's plate, and you didn't just chuck her out and go, "You are completely weird. You're leaving." No, I don't care. Well, she, she was not. There was a lot of people at the party, and Sadie yeah. was at the party. I Daniel Craig the party. was at the party. Yeah, a... Sorry, so Sadie was uh, was invited to the party. Yes. The waitress act was in order to gain access to the plate. Yes. I'd, so what I she did didn't is instead of approaching through the uh, ins and outs okay. of it. I was Why being. Not? I was, because it was my bloody birthday. I was getting trashed. I was having a good time. Like anyone ill tonight would do. You know, right. just because you're 60, love, doesn't mean you can't, you know, get off your trolley. The question is why do you think that Sadie, instead of using her position as a party guest to talk to Daniel Craig, which is legitimate in a party, I think you'll right. agree. Go on, I'm really him. getting on my wit <laughs> now. Oh. Do you want some? Not. Have you met anyone famous in your career? <laughs> really famous? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> if you met Daniel Craig, could you actually speak? No. There you go. She's right. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Please talk. Are you going to walk over and stand there in answer to every question? <laughs> <laughs> 
bit scared now. Yeah. No. It... Hey, I'm most scared cos I'm closest. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. Need an so, answer. Uh, so David's team is Sadie, a nanny whose foot Lee ran over, Omid's dog masseuse, no. or a plate-licking pretend waitress at Janet's party. Janet absolutely did, couldn't look at Sadie when she walked in, and I thought maybe that was because she really had licked it embarrassingly. It's just Janet an odd thing. Big. I mean, I'm leaning... Uh, I think it's Omid or Janet, and I'm leaning towards Janet on this one. Right, I'm mm. going Janet. OK, well, let's go Janet. You're saying Janet? OK. Uh, Sadie, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yes, I pose as a waitress. Yes, I clear <laughs> Daniel Coe's face away, and yes, I licked it clean. I just say, Sadie, that um, you sound uh, you sound very broad-minded. <laughs> Sadie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have five. Lee's team are catching up with one. <laughs> Which brings us on to uh, our final round that we call Quick Fire Lies. Uh, Lee's team are currently way behind, <laughs> so they need to make a comeback, starting with... <coughs> uh, oh, David Mitchell. Right. The screensaver on my phone is a photo of my living room carpet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody London for you, eh? <laughs> Lee, is, is he telling the truth? Well, if anyone's capable of this. <laughs> what colour is the carpet? Sort of, um, a very bright beige. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that you thought beige might be boring. I'll jazz it up a bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Why would you take a photograph of your carpet? Well, I'm... Um, I've got a mobile phone which is the same model as a phone as, that many people have. Yes. And, and I've needed a way of distinguishing it from other people's. You know, it might be left at a table in a meeting and then you pick it up and go, oh, yes, I immediately recognise that because it's the one with the car carpet. Picture of the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> a beige carpet. I might have done it once I know, so he's done ago. something on that carpet. Oh, he has it, has he? Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's got it on his phone. Oh, not again! I told you, I'll rub your nose in it! So you think... Yeah, I think you've done something. Um, um, right. You might photograph your carpet, but you wouldn't photograph a beige carpet. So what are we saying? True or false? So I think it's false. False. You're saying it's a lie. OK, so, uh, David, is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, David, the obvious question... Would you, would you please whip it out and let us have yeah, a look? Absolutely. There we go. Yeah. Oh, we, we have a close-up, actually. We've... And there it is. <laughs> it's true. The, the screensaver on David's phone is a photo of his living room carpet. It's the first time an Ericsson's got a close-up of a bit of beige carpet since Sven went out with Ulrika. <laughs> Originally, David had a picture of his bed on his phone, but got embarrassed about his Hannah Montana duvet cover. <laughs> Next up... <laughs> uh, Lee. <clears throat> Ooh, possession. Oh, right, you've got to pick the box up then from under the desk. Well, you say box. Yeah, oh, sorry, the Ooh, tube, the yes. tube. This is my wall map of the UK. I have marked every service station that I have ever visited on it. Oh, OK. I can so see him doing that. Yeah. <laughs> this is from a man who was criticising somebody else for photographing a beige carpet. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Sorry, if, are, they, um, are they little stickers? Yes. Sorry? Are there two colours of stickers? There are two colours what of stickers. What do they represent? The orange ones. Th these are the orange ones, the yeah. orange ones. Yeah. And I've also done blue ones. But why? Why? So I could differentiate between the two types but of service stations. Why? What? I'm about to tell you. OK, well, come on. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes Lee likes to finish his own sentences, sometimes not. <laughs> they are basically do two differentiating uh, service stations. <laughs> I use orange if I am heading north and blue if I'm heading south. Or if I'm heading west, I also go for blue. In east, I go for orange. Well, you have headed north a lot more than you've headed <laughs> west or east. I mean, how did you get back here? Make... <laughs> 
There's about... They're actually equal if you count them. Looks like there are loads more oranges. <laughs> Uh, now, that one on the, in Scotland, there, on the top... I can't believe you know where Scotland is, David. Well done. Near Inverness, there's one. That yeah, one there? That one there. Would, would reminisce about that. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? I will. I will reminisce about yeah. that. Uh, I went in, uh, went through to the main pasty area, where I ordered my Ginster's pasty, and uh, my Say Aberdeen service so station. No, it was absolutely the perfect temperature. Just, what, this just, is really hurting just, my arm. OK, you Sorry. can put it down. One more question, though. One more question. Yeah. One more question, though. Well, no, you're going to have to spoil can it you, with the details. Can you, can you if you want to have a look, they can have a look. Yeah. Can they? Yeah. yeah. These are all motorway service. Yeah. Oh, you're all coming, are you? Well, I you know. Yeah. 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 There's an F and a, an asterisk. Yes. What do they denote? They, they denote they not fantastic. And uh, <laughs> the asterisk is... Uh, <laughs> there's not a word. Blows my mind. <laughs> Blows my mind, um, the asterisk. And how many years of touring <laughs> does this represent? Oh, it's not just touring. I'll do it when I'm on holiday. I'll do it wherever I go. Mm. You know when you said that there were about the same number of orange and blue? There's seven blues and 33 oranges. <laughs> You're going to be laughing on the other side of your face when in the next round I say, I am colourblind. <laughs> so, David, it's time to take a guess. Aberdeen service station doesn't ring true. It's definitely... I wonder, with the Aberdeen one, that's right outside Aberdeen. So you stop, you stopped at a service station about six minutes after departing. <laughs> I stop and fill it up. Which I'll, 33 I'll... times out of 40 happens when heading north. <laughs> yes, it's uphill. You could... <laughs> Lie, lie. You're saying lie, lie. quite conclusively. Uh, Lee, is it the truth or is it, in fact, a lie? It is, in fact, a lie. No, no. no. Good it's a lie. That's not listening. I just say to the idiots that come up with these questions, is if it's not hard enough that I put little stickers on a map because I fill up and I like to get... They'll think, oh, no, how can we make it more harder? Well, I have four of them with blue one, one with an X, and one with a bloody asterisk. How the hell am I supposed to do that? It's really difficult. Just say, why don't you just stick one in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? <laughs> And there's the buzzer that uh, signals the end of the show, and I can reveal in a very, very tight contest tonight, I mean, there's very little between them. Um, David's team have won by seven points to three. <laughs> but, of course, it's not just a team game. And uh, my individual liar of the week this week is Davina McCall. I'm pleased to say that you'll have another chance to catch Davina's best bits on Would I Lie to Use Little Brothers, Big Brothers, Extra Factor, It Takes Two, Big Mouth, Champion of Champions, The Aftermath. Good night. <laughs>